compassionate people? Welcome to Vegan News. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm actually going to focus on just one story today because it's so big and so important to the entire animal rights movement, veganism, and the animals in general. And it confirms a lot of what many vegans have said for a long time. So with all that introduction, let's go ahead and dive right into the story. As some of you may know, there is a piglet that the FBI has been looking for named Lily. As some of you may know if you follow this channel or any kind of vegan news in general, you'll know that DXE rescued two piglets, one of which was Lily and the other is Ethel. The two piglets were found in a Smithfield Foods owned factory farm. Now we've got to preface this by saying publicly DXE was calling them Lily and Lizzie, but internally the code names they were using because of being under surveillance by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, they called them Lucy and Ethel. Lucy and Ethel were both found in a pile of their siblings' corpses behind their mother. Uh, if you aren't familiar with factory farms and the way they function, gestation crates are used, which I suggest you look into. It's basically a, a container the size of the mother pig, and she is kept there in the, fa in the crate, the, in, you know, so she can't turn around and nurse her own babies. She often crushes them. Uh, it's, it's not her fault, it's, even though the farmers will tell you it is. And it's just disgusting all around. Now, what makes this particularly important, and this story that will be linked down below, like I always link things and cite things, is that this was put out by The Intercept, by Glenn Greenwald, the guy who broke the story about Snowden's information and all that stuff. So this is a credible source about all of this. This is not conspiracy theory or propaganda or, you know, vegans making things up or anything like that. This is a very trusted source who already put his life on the line previously with Snowden and all of that and tried his best to protect his source. So we know that this is legit. I, I just want to emphasize that. I cannot emphasize enough how legitimate everything I'm about to say and go through with what he has published is. So with that out of the way, let's move on and slowly ease into what a lot of people are going to consider conspiracy territory and it is not so lucy and ethel were rescued from the Smith smithfield facility the factory farm hell on earth whatever you want to call it they really weren't even expected to survive given the state they were found in near death malnourished i i just tons of, of issues and problems nobody expected them to actually survive but they did the smithfield farm just the one farm just the one farm these two piglets came from breeds and slaughters over one million pigs each year and that's just the one facility the one farm it's it the best way i can get you to picture it is they're like a quarter of a walmart or, or maybe even the size of a walmart maybe stretched out a little bit more if you can imagine that they're huge facilities just filled with stall after stall with pigs mothers just trapped and they can't go anywhere and and these pigs they would have died without intervention from dxe and these pigs meant nothing to Smithfield, absolutely nothing. They had no profit value for them. They would have been thrown in the garbage like they do with thousands and thousands of pigs and piglets every day that they can't use. You know, let's talk a moment about these, about gestation crates and then the farrowing crates they're put in when the piglets nurse. You need to understand that it's mental abuse and torture for them. They are stuck there, unable to move completely. And they will bite at the bars until their gums start to go down to the bone and they're bleeding everywhere and nerves are hanging out of their gums and their teeth are gone. But yet a comment like mmm bacon will happen. It's absolutely crazy to me. Many countries have even banned these crates, including Canada and the European Union itself banned it just a few years ago. We have a few states on board here, but we need a federal law. But let's continue on with this story and where it's heading. So the rescue of these two piglets has quite literally turned into a federal case. At the very end of August, a six car armada showed up with bulletproof vests, automatic rifles, handguns, the whole thing. Full on steam FBI agents kicking in the doors of multiple farm sanctuaries around the country. Ching Farm Rescue in Riverton, Utah, and Love and Arms in Erie, Colorado were the two up on the list first. Now these two farms, and the reason it's important to talk about these two sanctuaries, not farms, the reason it's important to talk about these two sanctuaries is they have zero affiliation with DXE. They're just there to take in animals and help them. They had no connection to DXE whatsoever, but they were raided. Why? It's to create fear. But let's continue moving on and talk about other things that happened once they were at the farm. When they were at the farm, they had a warrant. That warrant allowed them to take DNA, hair, and ear clippings. Now, the ear clippings allowed them to take an inch of flesh 
off of the pig's ears. And the warrant was for any pig that was pink in color, had dock tails because they chopped their tails off in factory farming, or had a hole punched through the right ear. The FBI then used a veterinarian to pressurize the piglet's snouts and pin them to the ground in pain and fear while they lopped off an inch from each of their goddamn ears. The piglet's pain was so loud and so horrifying, the staff were in tears. The sanctuary staff, to clarify, not the FBI. The screaming and pain was so horrible, the FBI agents themselves didn't allow the veterinarian to do the procedure to the second piglet, thankfully. The sanctuary representative spoken to for the article, again linked down below, said that the piglet that had had an inch of her ear lopped off spent her time isolated and alone in depression and scared of other humans. Several of the volunteers from both sanctuaries were followed back to their actual homes. They were dramatically questioned in front of their friends and in front of their neighbors for no reason but to instill fear. Further proof that the FBI's show of force is about nothing but fear and screwing with our activism. Love and Arms was in the middle of an interview with the person that actually wrote this article and the U.S. Department of Agriculture called them to let them know that they had had a call saying they were out of compliance with certain licenses and licensing. Love and Arms spokesperson had, you know, said we had never had this problem ever before in the entire time we've been open. But all of a sudden, Two weeks after some search warrants and all this is going down, this happens. And again, we're, we are talking about somebody who has zero connection with DXE. DXE did not ask them to do anything for them at all. They have no proof of this. So the question then becomes, why is the FBI so intent on finding these piglets? What is so important to spend millions of man hours and millions of dollars kicking in the doors of compassionate sanctuaries that aren't even associated with DXE to find these people? In the article, you can see that they start making the link slowly between virtual reality like iAnimal and other programs that were used the previous month in a very, very well done campaign that has a lot of people talking and was gaining momentum. And then they added, you know, the rescue of Lily and Lizzie on top of it, or Lucy and Ethel. It began to put a lot of pressure on Smithfield. So then the question becomes, what has happened between the FBI and Smithfield Foods? one of the giants amongst food companies. And of course, when interviewed for the article, Smithfield Foods denied everything and kind of hinted at a vague distortion by animal rights activists when I'm not exactly sure how you distort going down the stalls with a camera and showing the horrendous treatment of these sentient creatures, these sentient beings who are just like us in every way that is important to be like us, to not hurt somebody. DXE's rescue attempts have been so successful and their open rescue methodology has been so successful that this is what they've brought down upon themselves. And this is a tempering point in the animal rights movement right now. No matter what you think about other things DXE has done, whether they're open protests of grocery stores or restaurants or asking for dog meat in a restaurant, things like that, put those things aside and, and look at what we're looking at right now. They saved two lives and sanctuaries across the country are being treated like drug dealers or illegal arms manufacturers or something. I, I really think DXE pissed off Smithfield something crazily and the entire animal ag industry as a whole enough that they devoted resources to this operation and swaying the government to their side through lobbyists and who knows what other nefarious means. We've seen the same thing when it came to Josh Tetrick and Just Mayo when the Egg Council was talking about putting a hit out on him but did so jokingly so they were able to get away with it. I think similar emails may surface at some point about this entire ordeal. I think the fact that DXE was open and honest that yes, we did take these piglets and yes, we rescued them and didn't try to hide anything or cover it up. Instead, they told their story. They showed their story. They showed the story of thousands of animals a second being murdered for nothing. And that puts them in jeopardy. It puts their product in jeopardy. It puts everything that they're trying to do for investors and themselves and employees and everybody making money off this suffering, it puts it in jeopardy. And they need to nix it immediately because the public is beginning to grow conscious and they're worried. Well, I'll tell you what, Smithfield, if you're that worried, why don't you do this? Why don't you start making seitan or some type of mock meats and get that out of raising and hurting compassionate sentient beings that want nothing more than to just live their lives free of pain and, and not be subjected to horrible conditions and, and being murdered and forcibly impregnated over and over again, watching their siblings die. 
The list goes on and on. We all know this. And I, I'm going to read a little excerpt from the article, but I'm not going to put it up on screen like I normally do. But I just want to read this real quick and then we'll go over it because I think this paragraph is really important and hits at the heart of all of this. And again, please read this article and have a conversation about it. The Justice Department's grave attention to a case of two missing piglets reflects how vigilantly the U.S. government uses extreme measures to protect the agricultural industry, not from unjust economic loss, violent crime, or theft, but from political embarrassment and accurate reporting the damages the industry's reputation is receiving. A sweeping framework of draconian laws designed to shield the industry from criticism and deter and punish its critics has been enacted across the country. Now they're talking about ag gag laws there. And they, it's 100% true. None of this is a conspiracy. None of this is fake. I know a lot of people might think it is, but it isn't. I cannot stress enough. Please read this. Please read this. And know you're, if you're getting your, your, your meat from a, a, a local farm, it's not any better for multiple reasons that we could go into in a whole other set of videos. I want you to take a moment and look at this video of what it's like inside of a Smithfield pig farm. Just look for one second. And now that you've seen that, is that how you imagine where your bacon came from or how anyone should live, let alone someone you think as lesser than you? No, no, no creature, no body, no person, no someone should live like that. Nobody. And nobody should die the way that they're being killed either. This is all insane. It's just, I can't believe. Smithfield's only real statement about this was that they risk, that DFC activists risked the lives of animals in their facility by rescuing the two piglets and trespassing. Really? Hold on one second, guys. Let me adjust the camera because I can't keep staying sitting for this. That's a little bit better. Look, here's the deal. And if anybody from Smithfield happens to see this or anything, fuck you. Change your practices. Become better people. Become a better company. It's 100% possible. There's tons of vegan companies doing it right now. And this is the future. We are the future. You cannot stop what is happening. People are waking up to the inhumanity and the, the awful cruelty of turning living beings into fucking machines. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You want to talk about corruption in politics? If you follow this last campaign, it came up a lot. The oligarchy came up a lot. The plutocracy came up a lot. And there is not, you can't get more proof than FBI agents putting on bulletproof fucking vests, full armor and machine guns, and rolling into animal sanctuaries and, and kicking in doors with warrants and slicing off pigs' ears. That's in, that's purely insane. The, the police state is so here, it's even on animals? Like, what the? Finding these piglets is about nothing but a show of strength to them. It is about nothing but showing their power over us and our choices, not just the animals, but over your choices as a consumer and your choices as a person in this country. So is that who makes the decisions for you? Is it Smithfield? Does Smithfield own the FBI? Does Smithfield own our government? Do animal agriculture companies and food companies own our politicians just like so many other companies do? Is this the future you all want? Is this the future we all want? I don't want it. I don't want any of this. A democracy is, is supposed to be about us and what we want, not what some giant company wants. If you're not vegan already, you need to look into it because cruelty is ridiculous. There's no reason for it in this day and age when you have plenty of choices available that taste exactly the same. And if you don't believe that, you need to go out and try the products because you have not tried them if you don't believe that. And if some things aren't exactly the same for you, who cares? Give it up. It's not all about you. Life isn't just about you. It's about everyone around you more than any time in history it's about everyone around you and that includes non-human animals so grow the f up lace up those shoes and get ready to run the race with us because in the next 15 to 20 years this is it we will be vegan all of us at the very least everybody in the population will be plant-based you know why because there isn't enough water there won't be enough water wars are going to be fought over water instead of oil that's it guys that's everything and i'm
fuck off about all of this. It's disgusting and horrible, and I needed a whole show today just to rant about it. So, if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we'll return to a regularly, regularly scheduled broadcast tomorrow. But for today, I felt it was really important to talk about this. And again, please read the article. Please donate to DXE to help them through this. If you disagree with some of their other practices, I do. In my opinion, I disagree with how they take on grocery stores and make us, you know, look bad and don't get across the information of veganism. I believe there's a different way to do it. But others, other vegans believe in a different way of doing it. And that's fine. I will support the things that I feel are right and you do the same and together we can end this nonsense and that is all this is all about this isn't about different factions of veganism or anything like that <sighs> all right guys love you so much thank you for watching and listening to me rant thank you for reading the article I cannot stress enough to please read and share that article I think it's the most important thing that has happened in the animal rights movement in a long time we are talking about a very mainstream journalist blowing the lid wide open on something as big as what happened with Edward Snowden when he revealed that stuff. So if you can spread it and you can, if you can help be a part of this, you really should be in any way, shape or form you can. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Love you guys. See you later.